when I need someone to tell my troubles to, you're the first one who comes to my mind.
Tell the world of the treasure you found. When I need someone to tell my troubles to, you're the first one who comes to my mind. Amen. We are so thankful for Trevor and Jennifer for leading us in praise and worship. And we are so thankful for the reminder that the altar of God is still open. And not only that, but that the arms of the Father remain open because forgiveness has been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Today, I want to talk from this topic, reasons to be hopeful. Reasons to be hopeful. Usually, when bringing a call to worship, I will use a psalm that you've heard several times before. And that is that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I love that psalm because it is a reminder at the beginning of worship that God makes days. And because God makes days, no two days are the same. They are all different. They are all unique. And only God would be able to say exactly how. But every day is new, which means that every day is unique. And God has given us a brand new day. In giving us a brand new day, the Lord shows us that days matter. We celebrate days because we were born into the world on a day. This is the reason why we have birthdays and birthday parties. We celebrate months because they are reminders in practical sense for farmers that now is the time to sow. It gives indication to birds that now is the time to fly south. Days matter because even at the end of a year, the world celebrated the transition from one year into a brand new year. Days matter. And what God has shown us is that the Lord makes new days as a way of keeping us in stride with time. I believe that God makes new days so that we are not stuck in one day, but that we are constantly moving forward with time. Now, you know, like I know, that though God can make a new day, though God can give us a new year, there are experiences in a former day or former days that can hinder us from moving forward. It is an aftershock, so to speak, of a traumatic experience that lingers, that prevents us from moving forward. Think about 2020. It's as if we've been shocked, I mean shocked and rocked for majority of the year. It's as if we have been on a ship all day long or a boat at sea all day long. And once we get back on ground, we still feel ourselves swaying from side to side, even though we know we're no longer in the boat. We know we're no longer in 2020, but we all know that we're going to be experiencing the aftershocks, the rocking and the reeling of 2020 for some time. 2020. It is enough in itself for us to look at 2021 and say there's no reason to have hope until we know that everything is going to be okay. 2020 has rocked us in such a way that many of us are apprehensive about being hopeful about 2021. I've been on social media, I've been on the internet, maybe you have too, and you've seen memes where people are speaking about how to approach the new year. 
I saw one that made me chuckle. And it said, we're going to treat it like we're going into a store for the first time. We're not going to touch anything. We're going to be quiet, and we're going to be still until we know that everything is okay. This is trauma. This is what happens when a person goes through a distressing experience, and then they are left with the shock of emotional despair. 2020 has been such a year on us that many of us are wondering if we should have hope about 2021. The scripture tells us that when hope is deferred, when hope is put off, when hope is delayed, when hope is removed, it makes the heart sick. It wears the heart down. It grieves the heart. And I believe that many of us are thinking apprehensively about going into 2021 with high hopes because of the aftershocks of 2020. It makes sense. Hasn't 2020 been a year of deferred hopes? All around the world, there were expectations. There were commitments. There were plans. There were strategies. There was, there was money put on the table. There were people gathered. There were ideals that were ready to manifest, hopes that were ready to be realized that had to be put off, postponed, delayed, and in some cases, gone forever. There is no return. I tell you, 2020 has run a number on us, and even though we have transitioned into a new year, if we are not careful, the emotional distress of a depressing and hard time can prevent us from being hopeful about a new year. If you are one who has experienced a traumatic experience, if you are one who has faced trouble that has been overwhelming, and you say, I'm not sure about trusting in a new year, Maybe it wasn't 2020. Maybe it was something that happened in 1993. But whatever it is, if you are one, because of trauma, you tell yourself not to get your hopes up. I want you to know first that you're not a bad person. It's a part of being human. But I also want you to know that you are not alone that you, like many others, have gone through the trials of life and have had to crawl and fight back to a posture to say, I'm hopeful about the future. In our scripture reading today, we are coming from the book of Lamentations. It's a writing that is known for the author's grief, sorrow, and expressed depression. You know, I love scripture for many reasons, but in particular that there is room for both rejoicing and lamenting. If you have made it through life and you have not found anything to lament about, maybe you're not being honest with yourself. But if you have gone through life, surely you have come up against something that has called you to grieve. And what the scripture shows us through this writing and many others is that God welcomes it. God welcomes our honest concerns, our honest critiques, our honest questions, even about God. God is not too big to hear our concerns. God knows that in this world, things fall apart. God knows in this world that we will have emotional responses to things falling apart. And this is the reason why the Lord says, cast your cares upon me. Stop walking through life as if you are unaffected. Stop living as if you are unimpacted. You are carrying burdens that are too heavy for you. Cast them onto me. And when we look at this chapter, this author is writing feelings and thoughts that could be described as a dark night of the soul. His trouble is so grievous that he has internalized it that God's wrath is against him. 
This is not Job. This is not Mary. He's saying that God's wrath is against him, which is the reason why he has gone through so much pain. I encourage you to read the whole chapter to hear how this person articulates the pain that they believe that God is putting them through. He says, I'm enveloped in tribulation and bitterness. He says, I've been shut in to darkness like a dead person. I've got heavy chains on my ankles and on my wrists that are constricting me from moving about. He says, I'm stuck. I'm sewn in. And not only that, my voice can't even get out. My prayers are not heard by God. I've called out to God, but I still hear no answer. He says that he feels as if God is like a bear leading him off the path just so that he can destroy him. The author is in a tight spot. I don't know if you've ever experienced a dark night of the soul so grievous that you've questioned if God is trying to destroy you, but this is where this man is at. And he says, as a result of going through this trauma, he's a soul deprived of peace. He says that I have forgotten what happiness is. He says my glory is gone and all that I had hoped to receive from the Lord is gone too. <sighs> he says that my continual thought of my affliction is like poison to my being. Now, I want you to hear this before we move to the good part, that this man is one who was struck by trauma, and even though the experience that was hard for him has happened and moved on, he is still thinking about the hardship. He's retelling himself of the distress that he has experienced, and he's telling himself over and over and over again. And every time he retells the story of what has hurt him, he says it's like poison into his body. Because every time he retells it, it's as if he relives it. And when he relives it, he re-experiences it. And when he experiences it again, it's like the pain comes back all anew. But here it is, even though he's retelling it in his mind again and again and again, he can't come with a new outcome. He can't bring about a new conclusion. And the reason is, is because the experience has already happened. He can tell himself again and again, oh, what if I've done this? Or how could I have done that? But he can't go back and change it because it's finished. It's as if he's playing a cruel game of what if with himself that he can never act on. He's traumatized. He's in pain. He feels sewn in. He feels isolated, and he even feels that God is against him. There are many people who felt like that in 2020. Prayed for people that you love to not die. Pray for an end to a pandemic. Pray to not lose your job. Pray to keep the finances up. And still, the inevitable happened. And no matter how many times we retell ourselves again and again, we can't go back and fix it because it's done. And this author says that as a result of what he's gone through, he's not happy, he doesn't have peace, and he's no longer hopeful. What has 2020 done to your soul? Do you have peace this morning? What has any hardship done to your soul? Do you have happiness this morning? Do you have hope this morning? I want you to know that our God has a history of helping people overcome trauma by giving us reasons to be hopeful. And the Lord does this by calling us to reflection, not just any kind of reflection, 
the Spirit of God calls us to reflect on who God has been in our lives. And so even while this author is going through a hard time and thinks that God has washed his hands of him, the Spirit of God comes to him and calls him to reflect. Yeah, I know what you're going through. Yes, it's real, but I want you to reflect on who God has been in your life. The Spirit is saying if you will reflect on who God has been in your life, it is sure that you will find reasons to be hopeful. And so the psalmist, or excuse me, the author of this text begins to reflect. And here's one reason why reflection is so important. Because it's like a movie. Life, there's no way that we get the whole story the first time through. We watch the movie again, we see something new. We watch the movie again, we see a different plot emerging through side characters, and this is the same way with life, is that in reflecting, we don't just focus on the one drive-by, we look back and we see how God has been working through it all. How about we reflect on 2020 and not just say about the things that have been hard, but what if we reflected on the things that have brought growth? Not just the things that brought tears, but what has brought joy? The Spirit of God, when first calling us to look anew, to be hopeful, is to reflect. And not just on what brought pain, but reflect on who God has been in your life. When the author reflects, what he notices is that God has always been with him. It's been hard, but God has been with him. And he knows God has been with him. Why? Because there's no way that he could have overcome all that he has experienced in his own strength. We couldn't have made it through 2020 on our own. We can't make it through any great hardship on our own. But he says it is the steadfast love of God that never ceases that has been with him. Hear this. The Spirit of God is calling the author to reflect. And while the author is saying that God is angry with me and that God's wrath is on me, the Spirit of God says, hold on. God's love has been steadfast in your life. It has never come to an end. And it's just like God. While we think God is upset with us, that God has turned God's back on us, the Spirit of God will come to us and remind us that we are deeply and eternally loved. And this is a reason to be hopeful. Because if we know that we have a God who is with us and has a steadfast love for us that is never ceasing, certainly we can have hope. Because certainly God wouldn't love us and abandon us or neglect us and leave us. We can't give up on God if God's love hasn't given up on us. The author says when he reflected and he looked back on who God has been in his life, he saw that God's love has always been present, even when trouble was. But not just that. He says when I look back and I see the presence of God, the reason that God has been present because God loves me. But not only that, God has expressed God's love. While the author, like many of us, is traumatized by a distressing experience and he's retelling himself again and again how it could have been better or what he should have done or how it could have worked out in a different way, the Spirit of God turns his gaze and says, hey, let me tell you something. You're worrying about what happened three years ago. You're worried about what happened three months ago, but... The mercies of God are new every morning. You're worrying about getting out of last week when the Lord has already washed all of that clean. When the Lord woke you up to a brand new day, it was new mercies. And so while you say that there's no reason to be hopeful because God is mad at me and God's wrath is poured on me, the Spirit of God says, you woke up this morning, you woke up with a new slate. And because God's mercies for you have been new, God is going to give you what you need in a brand new day. And that's reason to be hopeful. Is that the Lord who knows us is compassionate towards us and expresses his compassion by giving us what we need when we need it. Look at the author. He was in a tight spot. 
And what he needed most was hope. And this is the very thing that the Spirit of God came to give him. Not just one reason, but several reasons to lift your head up, to straighten your back, to wash your face, and be hopeful that God is doing a new thing. Has God given you any reasons to be hopeful? Let me encourage you, as the Spirit of God encouraged the author, reflect on who God has been in your life. Reflect on who God has been in your life all through 2020. And you are sure to find reasons to be hopeful that God is going to continue loving you and continue to have compassion on you into the very end. Let us pray. God, we love you and we thank you so much. That trouble doesn't mean that you're not present, but it means that you are even closer. And so, Lord, as we are thinking back on 2020, it may make us apprehensive about believing and being hopeful for 2021. But help us to center ourselves and look back. Help us to reflect on who you have been and God, may we find strength and inspiration to know that who you have been is who you are now and who you will always be. And we love you and we thank you so much for that. It's in Christ Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. When I need someone to tell my troubles to, you're the first one comes to my mind.